Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video. She's gonna be seeing the next couple of videos out. She's out and about today. We're gonna talk about Twitch and their new ad rules for streamers. Now, we've talked about Twitch before. It's not a good place to be, in my opinion. Uh, right now, if you're a streamer, I would hate to have most of our income coming from Twitch. We know last year that they changed the revenue split from, I think it was 70-30 to 50-50. They dropped that on creators. And then uh, a bunch of people got laid off at Twitch. And then their CEO stepped down at Twitch. And now we've got another shoe dropping. I don't know how many, how many feet they have over there. But here's another shoe that they are changing their ad rules. You're not allowed to bake in sponsorships into your videos. Now, this is kind of the way that that people do it, right? If you've watched any number of videos on YouTube or on Twitch, people always get sponsorships. That's where a lot of the money comes from for a lot of these creators. They actually make more money off of sponsorships than they do off of ad revenue. And now they're putting the uh, kibosh on that. We're going to talk about it. We've got some streamers uh, like Asmongold, uh, speaking out against it, telling people to maybe boycott Twitch. That's kind of crazy for Asmongold to tell people to boycott Twitch. It must be pretty bad. He was just defending. I, I watched a video he did, a reaction talking about Twitch a couple of weeks ago, and he was kind of defending Twitch. He thought that people were sort of uh, naysaying Twitch and that Twitch was fine, everything was fine, and now it turns out that no, the other shoe is dropping. I, I did a video before saying that Twitch should sell out to Rumble. If Amazon is not serious about Twitch, they should sell to another streamer that obviously wants more gaming content, but I think a lot of people are going to jump ship uh, for sure because of these new rules. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about Mr. Beast's reaction to it. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news views, and rants, guys. Uh, Kiki's not here. I'll give you a woohoo. Woohoo. Thank you so much for the support. We do have a Twitch channel, uh, Clownfish TV Gaming on Twitch. It just runs repeats of our videos 24-7 our gaming videos, and we've never really gone all in on Twitch. And I got to tell you, I can't, I can't advise that you go all in on Twitch at this point because every other month there's some other idiotic decision being made that blindsides creators. So this is coming from Kotaku. Um, Twitch's new ad rules are very bad for streamers. The top 100 streamers on Twitch just got told they're not allowed to make 80% of the revenue the way that they're used to making it. So on June 6th, Twitch rolled out a new set of advertisement rules that spell trouble for streamers large and small. The rules are directly related to branded content streamers add into their streams, which are a crucial source of revenue for a lot of creators. And the new set of rules could very well mean major consequences for your, your favorite streamers. So this is what uh, Zach Bussey posted. I saw something come through yesterday because we're actually in their partner program. We barely post over there, but but they actually led us into the partner program based on our YouTube platform. But I I just don't, I don't really like the vibe over there very much. And there's been a lot of weirdness going on with monetization. I'm like, I don't want to put my eggs into this basket because I think the handle is going to break on this basket. Uh, so according to Zach, let's go out here and see what he has to say. Twitch has new branded content guidelines. On-stream logos are limited to 3% of screen size. Burned-in video ads are not allowed. Burned-in display ads are not allowed. Burned-in audio ads are not allowed. Now, this is normal for YouTubers anyway to do this. In fact, we've done a few brand deals here and there, and you're supposed to basically bake the sponsorship into the video itself. So even if somebody has an ad blocker on, they still see the promotion because they, you know, they pay you pretty good money to run that. You know, it's basically an ad blocker proof ad and it's supposed to be organic. I mean, I've, I've read some scripts where I'm like, yeah, I, I sound really bad. I sound really bad. I know I sound bad reading sponsorship scripts, but uh, they give you talking points, you know, and all that. But uh, anyway, Anyway, you got to do what you got to do to make money, right? Um, Zach said, channel page ads, products in the background of your stream, you can allow those. Uh, links in chat, discussing, unboxing products you can allow, playing sponsored games you can allow. Here are a list of things you cannot do branded content for. Okay, let's see. Hateful products or services, such as products that promote hateful stereotypes or include offensive slurs. Illegal products and services, such as selling, advertising, or trafficking drugs and firearms and counterfeit goods. Yeah, okay. Gambling products, okay. Unauthorized sharing of private information. Spams, scams, and other malicious content. 
well, what does that, what, what if, what if you're promoting an app that turns out to be malware, but you had no idea you know, when you're promoting it, it kind of scares me. I don't do a lot of app sponsorships now because I look at the app and I'm like, mm, I almost canceled one. We did a game a few months ago and I almost canceled it because their site was down. I'm like, I can't send people to this site because I don't know, I don't know what's going on with it, but it turned out it was just a glitch and everything was fine. But firearms, uh, weapons, uh, adult oriented products, financial products and services, uh, ICOs, medical facilities, political content, cannabis related products and alcohol. All right. In the aftermath of the announcement, streamers took to Twitter and Twitch to lament the changes with big names like Asmongold threatening to leave Twitch entirely. He should. He should. I think he would take a lot of people with him. Twitch released some clarification via Twitter, but it's unclear what the rules will actually what rules will actually be in place come July 1st. This could be a defining moment in the streaming site's relationship with its creators. Another one. Another one like the third or fourth time in a year who are undoubtedly the reason it exists, but what exactly did Twitch announce? What does it mean? Uh, so basically, yeah, you can't bake the ads in as I understand it. Pre-recorded ads or commercials, they're embedded directly into the stream or burned in ads. And that's what the majority of sponsorships are, at least in pre-recorded content. Uh, the big creators are the ones who get fucked by this almost exclusively. CEO of Ping Labs and former Twitch employee Theo Brown told Kotaku over the phone, and that's what's so scary. The top 100 streamers on Twitch just got told they're not allowed to make 80% of their revenue the way they're used to making it. This is going to have repercussions. One streamer rather sarcastically pointed out, since Twitch's new ad rules do allow creators to place branded products in the background of their streams, they can at least try to crowd their streaming setups with random items. You could do that. It's not just popular streamers who are getting fucked, quote unquote, by the new Twitch ad rules. It's major events like the Game Awards and the Streamer Awards, which only use the streaming service every once in a while to air live streams of ceremonies. In particular, events are fucked. The only way to make money off viewers on Twitch is to stream six days a week. You need to be streaming constantly for like 60 plus hours a week. If you're an event that streams once every three months or once a year, that model doesn't work. You need sponsors to make money. The events are only viable because of sponsors' money. And those sponsors expect to have pretty prominent placement in the content in order to make it work. These are deals that streamers and creators have been building off platform because it's the only way to make enough money to justify this type of content. Yeah, it's very hard to be a game streamer. Uh, you're basically you know, playing music on the street corner hoping to get tips because the ad rates on Twitch aren't that great. Uh, you're hoping to get sponsors. You're hoping to get memberships. And that's why, you know, part of the reason why we don't stream as much is it's it's a hard game. You really have to do it consistently and, you know, set expectations and build up that audience. But I think, personally, I think the potential for parasocial relationships are much greater if you're streaming every day and people see you every day. I think you get some really dedicated fans, but I think you also tend to get people that cross lines, cross boundaries, because they're like, you're in my you know, living room, you're on my computer, you're on my phone every day, day in, day out for years. I've given you money. You need to listen to me. You need to date me. You know, you need to give me a job. You need to do this. You need to do that. And it's, you know, I think sometimes some lines can get crossed. That's my personal opinion. Um, so Twitch is responding, apparently. Not long after the blowback, Twitch released a series of tweets clarifying its branded content policy, saying the initial update was overly broad, but the rest of the company's tweets don't effectively clarify the situation, and streamers are still angry. Uh, Brown told Kotaku that Twitch technically always banned, technically always banned burned-in videos, but wasn't really enforcing it before. I can believe that. I've also seen platforms that sell it as a service, literally just embedding an ad player in your stream for money, that's what Twitch says it was trying to clearly ban from streams, but the tweet thread shared in the afternoon of June 6th does not renege on its promise to limit the size of branded content logos. Uh, we do not intend to limit streamers' ability to enter into direct relationships with sponsors, and we understand that this is an important part of how streamers earn revenue. Uh, they said, we wanted to clarify our existing ads policy that was intended to prohibit third-party ad networks from selling burned-in video and display ads on Twitch which is consistent with other services, uh, you're allowed to burn ads into YouTube videos for now. This is what I'm 
This is what I'm concerned about for now. I think they want a cut of all the advertising. And in a lot of cases, if you're making deals outside the platform, they do not get a cut. They do not get any of your sponsorship dollars, right? Unless you're going through like an MCN or something like that. And I could see YouTube doing this because they're trying to become TV and they don't want these ads burned into their videos. If, if you're taking a sponsorship from Coke, they're not going to be able to sell to Pepsi because you've burned a Coke ad into your video. You know what I'm saying? So that's probably what they're looking at. And, and, um, I, I think the ad situation is pretty dire right now. The ad rates are dropping across the board. And I think they're looking at this, like, where else are we going to get some money? Oh, sponsorship dollars. We haven't taken our cut yet. We'll handle your sponsorships for you. And then we'll take a cut. It's the same reason that YouTube is pushing people to do memberships and to do more live streams because they're taking a huge cut of the memberships and the live streams. But in the case of Twitch, I think Twitch is trying to justify its existence at this point. I don't think Twitch is very important to Amazon. I really don't. You know, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think Twitch is important. They just laid a bunch of people off. They had their CEO step down. They've got some new person in charge now. And clearly they're making uh, business-oriented decisions that are going to F over creators. And in Twitch's case, I think they're more dependent on their creators having a good relationship with their their brands and their audience than YouTube. Because YouTube, I mean, you're just searching through a sea of pre-recorded content. You know, sometimes people don't care who the personality is. They were just looking for information on this or that or whatever. And you can just throw ads on it. But in Twitch's case, having that direct connection to a personality is much, much more important. And they're screwing those people over. And there aren't a lot of options right now. I mean, YouTube is, I'm going to be honest, they're actually hostile, I think, to streamers because the reason a lot of people don't stream very often or they pull their streams down or they hide their streams is if you live stream on YouTube for some reason, I don't know why, it's like an algorithm thing, but it actually kind of destroys your channel for a while. If your channel has been putting out mostly pre-recorded content and then you do a live stream, you seem to get knocked down in the the search results. Does that make sense? I don't know why that is. I've seen it happen multiple occasions with us. You know, it's part of the reason we don't live stream on the main channel very much because it actually does affect our other videos. Uh, I don't know why that is. I think I think part of it is YouTube is trying to type your channel. Like, are you a shorts channel? Are you a long form content channel? Are you a live streaming channel? What are you? And it wants to put you into a category to promote you that way. So if you're doing mostly pre-recorded content or mostly shorts, and then you decide to switch it up, it tends to throw a wrench into things. I mean, that's just my armchair observation. I'm by no means an expert on the algorithm. Very few people are, even people working at Google. But just my armchair observation is it tends to mess with the algorithm the way they have it set up. So this is what they're saying, uh, Brown again. I think what this signifies more than anything is that if Twitch is talking to creatives, They're only doing enough to feel good about making bad decisions. We've seen them ban people, some of their top streamers, for really nebulous reasons, and it didn't affect them at all. They're just like, yeah, whatever. See ya. See ya. Uh, Not to prevent them from making bad decisions. Even if this was done for legal reasons or external pressure from the ad team, the ad team has been trying really hard to make it easier for Twitch to sell ads. If some advertiser goes to Twitch and they see their ad play on top of the streamer playing another ad, they're not going to be happy. That's true. Like I said, you take a sponsorship from Coke, they can't sell an ad to Pepsi or if they sell an ad to Pepsi, Pepsi's not going to be happy. And they're going to be like, we want our money back because you ran our ad up against like our ad was interrupted by a Coke sponsorship. Like what the hell are you doing to us here, Twitch? Uh, So I can see why they'd be motivated to make these changes. They did not do any of the necessary homework or effort uh, to do this in a way that doesn't directly harm creators and their perception of Twitch. Twitch is already damaged. Twitch has been damaged. You know, the revenue sharing, and, um, you know, nebulous bannings. And now, now this shit, what's with the Pepe on your shirt there, dude, <gasps> Twitch is all right. They're all right. So now we've got Asmongold weighing in on it. I think Mr. Beast is weighing in on it too. Uh, Twitch crackdown on creator ads, sparks calls for boycotts and protests. Uh, streamers are calling on their fellow content creators to boycott Twitch after the platform announced major changes for brands and content. Um, yeah, so Asmund Gold, who streams MMO content, tweeted a call to his fellow content creators to either boycott Twitch or leave the platform altogether and migrate to other ones such as YouTube, Kick, or Rumble. 
pointing out that Twitch imposing these advertisement restrictions does more financial harm to streamers than good in the long run. I don't say it lightly, but this is a legitimate situation where streamers should consider boycotting Twitch or moving to other platforms, he said, making common and harmless forms of advertisement literally against TOS so Twitch can monopolize more of streamers' incomes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, normally I, I do agree with Asmund Gold a lot of times. I watch his reaction videos and I think he's he's a pretty smart guy. I do. I think he's pretty smart. Don't always agree with everything he says, but... And I did watch one just like a month ago where he was kind of like, ah, I think people are overreacting about Twitch, Twitch being hostile to creators. I'm like, nah, dude, you know, I know you make a lot of money on Twitch. That's your primary source of income, but they're, they're, they're fucking people over. They've been fucking people over. Ask uh, Dr. Disrespect what happened there. Actually, a lot of the uh, people that got banned from Twitch for nebulous reasons uh, wound up on Rumble of all places. I think they have a couple over there now. Uh, Tips Out, co-founder of influencer network and media company OTK, wrote a statement on Twitter saying the organization will leave Twitch if the platform follows through on enforcing these rules. Asmin Gold's a member of the group. This goes through. We're going to leave Twitch. This is a direct attack on our business staff and all the hard work we put into our organization. Uh, As the controversy expanded, Twitch explained further about its policy updates in a Twitter thread today acknowledging that missed the mark with the policy's overly broad language and will rewrite it to make it clearer. We do not intend to limit streamers' ability to enter into direct relationships with sponsors. We just want a cut of that. We, we do understand that this is an important part of how streamers earn revenue. We want to clarify our existing ads policy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, Mr. Beast is coming after them too. Uh, YouTube's biggest star, Mr. Beast, joins the revolt against Twitch's new rules. I don't know if he does anything on Twitch. I know he's taken TikTok to task before because he's like, I get billions of views or millions, hundreds of millions of views on TikTok and I make like no money over there. Like you guys are screwing creators over, really. See what's going on here. The 158 million followers on YouTube, Mr. Beast has an army of fans that he frequently calls on for help. He's hoping he can sway the bosses at Twitch to reconsider its latest uh, branded and sponsored content policy change. Hey, Twitch, how about instead of handicapping what creators make, you help them make more seems more logical. In a now deleted tweet, hmm, he called the new guidelines the funniest thing he's seen all year before teasing he might stream on a rival platform despite not being a gamer just to spite them. And Elon Musk says, great. He says, great. Um, It's time for Kick to take over. Uh, one word, the Twitter and Tesla owner, Elon Musk, weighed in on the debate and seemingly threw support behind the Twitch protest. Great, because it's good for him because they're trying to do more video on Twitter. Uh, everything is breaking. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I, I have I have serious concerns about the future of YouTube. I've, I've talked about it before. I think that we need other alternatives because I think YouTube's plan is to become cable TV. I think they want to become a rival streaming service and they're, they're not really that interested in creators either. I think they're more creator friendly than Twitch is currently. Twitch, I think is basically some vestigial thing that Amazon could potentially divest themselves of if it can't turn a profit. I don't think they care that much about Twitch and they're hurting right now. They're, you know, again, these mega corporations, they will shut down businesses that aren't profitable enough. They can be profitable, but if they're not profitable enough, they'll shut them down. I think Twitch is one of those businesses where they're just like, we don't see a path forward. Like, you know, how are we going to monetize this? Um, And there have been videos on this, you know, talking about talking about Twitch and and monetizing it and its audience and their expectations. And it's very hard to, you know, find advertisers that fit into the Twitch niche. You know, it's not like they can advertise like Swift or wet jets to middle-aged moms because they're not watching Twitch for the most part. So you have a very limited audience of people watching Twitch and you don't have a lot of, you know, evergreen pre-recorded content either. It's all live streaming. So there, there are multiple problems going on here. Uh, multiple problems going on here. So Anyway, uh, I'm going to keep an eye on it. Uh, like I said, we are on Twitch. We do not put all of our eggs into that basket. I kind of made that decision a year or two ago. You know, we were going to ramp up our gaming content. I'm like, I don't even think there's a point in, you know, producing anything exclusive for Twitch because I, I don't have a good feeling about the long term future of Twitch. And if you're not a big deal on Twitch already, you're probably not going to be. I'm going to be honest. I would say at this point, if you were going to start streaming today, 
I would not go to Twitch. I would go someplace else because I think it's days are numbered. I can totally see Amazon just divesting themselves of this company completely at some point in the future. And I think it would be one of these other one of these other streamers, you know, I could see maybe, you know, Twitter or Rumble or Kick or somebody absorbing them. YouTube has no need for them because they already do live streaming and they already have a bunch of Twitch people, you know, using both platforms. Some of them have, have made the jump already, but uh, I would not put your eggs into this basket. This handle is going to break. Absolutely. So I'm going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants. And we'll talk later. Sorry, I, I yelled loudly. That's okay. I got I got the limiter on. Okay, so uh, you can tell my kick setting. Yeah, you can you can so you can Wait, tell, really it automatically limits it when it, I yell. It does when you get when the pitch gets too high. It it <laughs> it does. When sometimes if you sound like all robotic, it's oh because it's, it's bringing the decibels. Down. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.